On day one, I was bringing food back to my queen, wanting to prove myself as a worthy warden ant. Look at what I did, your highness. Fozo, no! That food is from the Forbidden Forest, which only means... In a huge burst, ginormous scary spiders burst through my colony's anthill walls. Oh no! Defend the queen! Groups of stronger warden ants ran in to defend. Wait, uh, I can help! Stay back! This is your fault. And you're the weakest ant in the colony anyways. My warden ant colony was doing everything they could. But the spiders, they were too big. One by one, they would kill and eat my colony. <laughs> Us forbidden spiders have finally found you and will feast upon your god. My once beautiful anthill was now a battlefield, but from all the destruction, paved a tunnel. Queen, we have to escape. Come on, this way. On day two, a small group of us were able to escape the anthill tunnel, only to reach a large river. If one of us falls, we're done for. My queen and the group of other ants began to jump from lily pad to lily pad easily. Uh, wait up. I tried to jump after them, but it was a lot more difficult for me. We must keep going. Guys, no, wait for me. I was in the middle of the river doing my best when out of nowhere, I heard, uh-oh. I looked up and saw an owl flying overhead. It was getting closer and closer, but thankfully I made it to the other side just in time. That was close, but my people, they're gone. Those spiders found our anthill because of me. I have to make things right and find them. Ah, wait, fire ants? Hey, have you guys seen any other warden ants pass by here? Passing to you, passing to me, passing to you. Hello, can anyone answer me? Ugh, I followed the line until it brought me to a different looking tree. And on a wooden throne sitting in front of it was the fire ants king. Wait, a warden ant in my terrain? Ha, <laughs> leave. Leave at once. No, listen, please. My colony, most of them, they're gone. Just destroyed by these large, deadly spiders. The forbidden spiders have gotten to you too. This isn't good. Follow me. I followed the king ant until we reached a shrub blocking our way. He set it ablaze, revealing another pathway. Walking down it, I saw nothing but dead looking trees. And in Inside of the webs were some of the king's past people. The forbidden spiders have taken control of this area ever since you, warden ants, went into hiding on the day of the big battle. The strength of those monsters is unmatched and their sole purpose is to kill, eat, and move on to the next place. Wait, did you say we went into hiding after a big battle? What big battle? Before the king could answer me, though, we both heard rumbling and destruction coming back from the empire. Oh, no! On day four, the two of us arrived back, only to see pure destruction and chaos. The fire ants were running around terrified as the forbidden spiders entered in and destroyed everything. My colony! I, I have to help! As I said this, one of the spiders spotted me. A rogue little ant warden escaped. No matter. The spider lunged to try and eat me, but I ran underneath him just in time. He was chasing behind me, but I noticed the tree. I can get away there. I began to escape of the fire ant's large tree, jumping from platform to platform. Come here. It wasn't long until I made it to the top where I... I saw a skull apple. I'm so tired. I need energy. I ran up and took a bite out of the apple. And because of this, I became a stronger warden ant. I gained five more hearts and was now 
more powerful. Whoa, what did this apple just do? There you are. The spider launched towards me, but out of fear, I let out a new sonic bite at him. Whoa, the spider was barely phased though and was slowly walking forward, about to eat me whole. But because of all the fire, the tree was weakening, causing the entire trunk to shake. This isn't good. The entire tree collapsed, causing the spider to fall straight to its death. Ah, ah. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. That skulk apple, it made me stronger, but why? The lily pad I was on was flowing down the stream until I got washed up on a beach. As I stepped on land, my newly formed tendrils began to wiggle. Because of this, I was able to spot patches of skulk leading away from the beach. Whoa, I followed it and was able to find my queen and a group of my people. Guys, there you are. I I found you. I ran over to them in pure excitement, but as soon as they noticed me, they turned and blasted their warden abilities my way. Ah, ouch. Why are you guys doing this? Hold your attacks. The queen walked forward away from the other ants. Queen, I- Bozo, all of this is your fault. Please, I didn't mean to expose the colony. I just- Silence. You have done enough. You are hereby banished from the colony. Because of you, those unstoppable spiders killed most of our people. From there, the queen walked away from me and inside the newly formed anthill. Wait, banished? Hey, come back here. Look, our colony can't just keep hiding from those spiders, okay? This forest, it's all dying. We have to take a stand. What do you know about taking a stand? You weren't there on the day of the big battle. The day those spiders entered this forest, we tried to fight back against them, but lost everything. I lost everything, and it won't happen again. So that's why we went into hiding? Because we lost a fight? Well, I'm not gonna just live in fear. I'm gonna stop those spiders and take back what's all rightfully ours. Bozo, it's a death wish. I left the anthill with a newly found confidence and was able to find a nice place right on the edge of the beach. Time to make my own home. If I got kicked out of my colony, then I will just make a new one. Inside of it, I even made a room that held the skulk apple I found earlier. I wonder what's so special about this fruit. My thought then got interrupted by a loud yell from outside. What's going on? On day seven, I went over to another spot of the beach where there was a tailless scorpion being surrounded by large crab bands. Bandits. Uh, back off. I'm warning you. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Sting us? <laughs> Hey, leave him alone. I used my warden bite to bite one of the crabs back. Ah, brave little lamb. <laughs> You're gonna regret that. All of the crabs from there began to jump around and try to stomp over me. Ah! I was doing my best to avoid them until we all got cut off by a much larger crab. Hey, that's my anthill. Well, look who built in the crab bandit's territory. Sorry. Back off and leave us alone. Should it? If you want your stupid home and belongings back, then you listen to us. Wait, the skulk apple is in there. Okay, what do you want? Both of you guys must pay the taxes for being on our beaches. And I know just the way that you can pay them. <laughs> On day eight, the scorpion and I followed one of the crab bandits to a tall hedge. We walked through and inside of it, only to reveal that the other side held a back yard? Wait a minute, is this a pool party? There were people all dancing and partying around, and some even diving in the pool. Jaw party! 
This is not a safe place for an ant. I followed the crab alongside of the pool area, avoiding being spotted until we saw a grill on the opposite side. Those people make the best food in town. You go and bring back a full burger from them, then you can have your home back. We have to go through all of this? Okay. Yeah, no biggie. The two of us left the hedge and started to make our way through the backyard. People were walking and dancing everywhere, and some even almost stepped on us. From the countless swimming, we also had to do our best to avoid large water splashes and dropped belongings. We were almost spotted, but took cover right before the grilling station. But my attention then got caught inside of the house where I saw another burger sitting on a countertop. Wait, is that made out of skulk? Just like that apple. I need to get it. Instead of listening to the crab's orders, I went straight for the burger inside. What are you doing? On days nine to 10, I was inside of the kitchen and was able to climb up to the countertop. Aha, uh -huh. there it is. I went over and took a bite out of the burger. And because of this, something happened. I once again grew stronger in size, gained five more hearts, and could now let out my very own warden boom. Oh. Yeah! I quickly picked up a piece of the burger, but as I looked back, I saw that the scorpion was in the open. Before he could move, a random pool lady spotted him. Scorpion! Everyone in the party began to panic and run around frantically. Everybody, run! Well, so much for not getting caught. Yeah, don't worry. I'll take care of it. Oh no, I ran towards them. The buff man was trying his best to hit at and step on the scorpion. But thankfully, I was able to run in and shoot my newly found ability right at him. Whoa! Ah, I barely know how to swim. Hey, you, we need to leave now. On days 11 to 12, the scorpion and I made it safely to the hedge and hid inside of it. That guy was lucky you stepped in. He wouldn't be getting out of that pool if good old Pierce the Perilous got a pinch in. Yeah, okay. Pierce, is it? Whatever you say. But hey, it looks like you found the boom burger. Wait, you know what this is? Oh yeah, man. You wooden ants used to be crazy strong because of that stuff. I heard there were different food items your people used to bring to their colony. The skulk apple, the boom burger, the tendril cake, the blinded pizza, and the deep dark sandwich. Maybe if I can find all of them, I can bring them to my colony and show them that we can put up a fight. Come on, let's go. Wait, man, don't we need to go back to get a burger for the crabs? They'll finish us. Yeah, with this new sonic boom, we'll see about that. We traveled back to the crab sandcastle only to see a horrifying sight. Everything is in ruins. What happened here? On days 13 to 14, as I headed inside the ruined sandcastle, I noticed that all of the bandit crabs were gone, except for their leader, who was being overshadowed by the giant forbidden spider. Please, I beg you, mercy. Fine, your beast will be a quick one. In one attack, the spider killed the crab instantly. That's Alvo. He killed my entire species. Hurry, we gotta hide. We ducked behind some rubble just in time. We have expanded our caves for spare creatures to be fed on in the winter. The winter? No. I have another use for them. Spare creatures? Are some of my people still alive? I have to find out. Pierce, you head back to my anthill. I'll be back soon. Wait, I, uh, I can help. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll just stay away from the giant creepy spiders. After following the spiders for a short amount of time, we reach a dark, scary forest. This must be the Forbidden Lands. As they began to crawl down, I heard my queen's words in the back of my head. It's a death wish. I have to do this for my people. On days 15 to 16, the twisting tunnels of the cave led me down under the earth as the echo of spiders crawled all around me. Stay calm, Fozo. I slowly 
pushed further and further into the caves until ugh, this place is the worst. As I looked towards where the spider was heading, I saw a cavern and there were a ton standing all around and lots of spider eggs. Listen to me, my family. Those ants we have taken alive will be dealt with shortly. When my hatchlings rise, they will eat them and grow. Our family will be much, much larger. If they can get even more spiders, running away won't even be an option anymore. With all of them paying attention to Alvo, I saw an opening to a side chamber filled with even more webbing. I quickly ran inside to see some warden ants caught up in the webs. Ugh. Ozo, what are you doing here? You're gonna get yourself killed. Don't worry, I'm getting you guys out of here. On days 17 to 18, I blasted my people free and noticed just how weak they were. Just follow right behind me, okay? As I led them back towards the entrance of the tunnels, we saw that more spiders were blocking our path. Uh, great, we're trapped. Wait here, I'm gonna cause a distraction. I crawled down a separate tunnel as fast as I could. And at the end of it was a tall cave with sleeping spiders up and above. Perfect. With a powerful sonic boom, I sent out a large echo throughout the tunnel, shaking the walls and causing the roof to collapse. I barely got out of the way as the sleeping spiders were crushed by the rubble. What was that? It's coming from the sleeping quarters. Okay, I didn't really think this through. The spiders ran in as I started to creep my way back down the tunnel when... Hey, the man's escaped. Kill him. Uh-oh. The spiders began to chase me down the tunnels and back up towards the exit. I gotta hurry. There waiting for me were the other warden ants. Almost there! Ha! Ah! I spun around and used my sonic boom attack to break the roof and the entrance, blocking the spiders in. Phew! Whoa, you actually did it! But how? I'll explain later. We shouldn't stay here any longer. On days 19 to 21, the warden ants and I made it safely back to base. You made it! And with friends? I told you I would. Now, to really make this place a home for a colony, I got to work building a desert-styled room for Pierce in the anthill. You know, no one's ever been this kind to me. Uh, thank you. Of course. From there, I made sure to dig out more of the base to make room for all of my fellow warden ants. What you did back there, that was incredible. Now, uh, where's the queen? Before I could answer, another warden ant walked into my base. Wait, I remember you. You, you were with the queen, right? Yes, and I saw your entire argument. And as crazy as it sounds, I think you're right. I'm done running away. Hopefully, more of my people can see that soon. With that, I went over and placed the boom burger down in the base for everyone to see. As I did this, some of the ants came over and took a bite of the food themselves, causing them to upgrade. Whoa, that's one good burger. Mm -mm -mm. So if I can bring back the rest of the warden foods, the colony will become stronger than ever before. I wish we were in the queen's good graces still. I bet she knows all about this kind of food, but now she probably wouldn't tell us anything about it. Well, maybe she does doesn't have to. On days 22 to 26, I traveled back all the way to my people's destroyed home. There were webs everywhere, but seemingly no one in sight. Okay, if the queen had anything that would lead me to the next piece of warden food, it would be in here. As I walked closer to the queen's throne, something began to happen as it sensed my presence. Whoa, a hidden passageway? I walked inside and saw that I was in the queen's room. While searching around, I wasn't finding any clues, but I did find a strange journal. The memory of Warren, the big battle, and Warren, who's that? I began to read as I saw that we 
had a king. His name was Warren, and he was the strongest warden ant in the colony, always standing up for his people and doing what was best for them. But then the forbidden spiders came to these lands and started to take over everything. King Warren, for once, thought it would be best to run and keep his colony safe. But the queen told him otherwise. We are the warden ants. If anyone can take them on, it's us. We must fight for what's ours. Okay, my love, I trust you. He led the whole colony in a battle against the forbidden spiders. And the big battle ended with his death. The warden ants faced their first loss. And from that moment, we went into hiding. Poor queen. No wonder she doesn't want to fight. She blames herself for King Warren's death. As I said this, I looked over to where I found the diary, and sitting there was a hidden map. Aha! Looks like the queen didn't want anyone to find this. Could this lead to the next piece of warden food? On days 27 to 29, following the map's coordinates led me straight to a large building on a hillside. What could be in here? I found a small crack in the wall to enter through and into the structure to see that the place was filled with old people? <laughs> I love this show. What is this? this place some sort of retirement home all right barbara your birthday tendril cake will be ready soon ah good because i'm not done watching my show yet yeah right tendril cake that's got to be the next warden food i need i followed the staff member as they left the room and headed straight for a dinner table there on it was the cake i needed bingo I crawled around the room until I made it onto the rafter and above the cake. How am I supposed to get down there? Uh, okay, maybe this wasn't my best idea. Ah! Ah! I looked around and was now on the tendril cake, surrounded by burning candles. Ow! Oh, well, time to eat. But just before I could take a bite, the candles around me came to life? What the? Stop right there, you dirty pest! This cake is under the protection of the CPU! The CPU? The Candle Protection Unit! Whoa, 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 wait! Look, I just need one slice to... Wax and Flame Units, move in! Eliminate this pest! Squadrons of Candle Warriors began to run in and attack. Candle mages would try and burn me with their flames, and the small candles would explode! Ah! I began to run, but the frosting was so thick. No, I'm stuck. The candles all came rushing in and were about to take me down when we all heard loud footsteps shaking the entire cake. Time to blow out the candles on my cake. Oh, units, this is a code red. Code red. Get out of there. All the candle warriors started to run back as a powerful gust of wind blew over the area. Every single one of them were completely wiped out. That was fun. Too bad I'm allergic. On days 33 to 35, I was finally able to take a bite out of the tendril cake. This caused me to upgrade again. I was now a stronger warden ant, gained five more hearts, and had wings. Whoa. Before I left, I grabbed a slice of the cake and started to actually fly. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of it. I was about to leave when I saw a little candle person hiding in the rafter above. <laughs> ah! Whoa, hey, it's okay. Are you all alone? Yeah, I've always been. The other candles weren't very nice to me. Yeah, I know the feeling. Well, I got somewhere in mind where you don't have to be alone then if you want to come with me. I brought the little candle back to my colony's home where I built him his very own candlelit room. Wow, wee, thanks! Those other candles would never do something like this for me. Kick me out because I didn't agree with the way they did things. You and I have a lot in common already, little guy. What's your name? They call me Kid. Well, Kid, you don't have to worry about anyone kicking you out of here. I promise. With that, I placed the tendril cake slice down in the base and allow the other ants to eat it, causing them to upgrade. Wow, that's some good food. 
Uh, by the way, Fozo, I think your scorpion friend was looking for you. Said something about meeting him at a pond? On days 36 to 39, while flying around the nearest pond, I smelled something. Ah, what is that? Hey, Fozo, down here. I flew down below and landed beside Pierce. Is that smell coming from you? What smell? While you were out, I think I found the savory slice. Huh? The what? You know what? Just follow me. He then led me over to a sewer entrance. No wonder you smell so bad. Once we went inside, the pipe opened up into a whole sewer town. There was trash and sewers everywhere. And rats roamed the streets and their homes. It's like a whole civilization lives down here. We made it across the town as Pierce brought me to the entrance of a pizzeria. Okay, so listen up. The next warden food piece, the blinded pizza, is in here for sure. It is? Only thing is, it's locked, and its owner is a real piece of work. But I think you can open it. Great, come on, let's go. Well, I could pick the lock if I had a tail. As you can see, I don't. But if my new aunt pal were to find me a new one, you want me to get you a new tail? Yep, it's the only way to get that blinded pizza. And I think I know just how you can find one. On days 40 to 44, I arrived at the factory on the surface. What kind of scorpion tail would be here? Using my new wings, I flew through a vent and into the building with loads of abandoned equipment and crates around. It wasn't long until I came across a broken down claw machine. Is his tail in there? Crawling inside of the machine, I pushed past toy after toy until finally seeing a toy scorpion tail huh didn't know they made these but as i was about to grab the tail i was blown back by a small explosion ah i looked back and hopping towards me were a bunch of little toy creepers this machine is our prison and nobody will take any of our things away from us they all began to attack as they would leap up and explode. You guys are crazy. Back off. I flew up and tried to stay out of their reach, but one jumped off of a tall tail, hitting me head on. Ah, ah. Hitting the ground hard made me accidentally let out a sonic boom, breaking open the machine. An exit for me. On days 45 to 47, all the creepers jumped out of the machine as I peacefully went over to grab Pierce's new tail. I then flew out of the factory, heading back to the sewers when I was hit out of the air by webbing. Ah! Looking around, I realized I had fallen into the heart of the forbidden forest. Here, the spiders had built up a huge encampment with even more spider eggs all around. Did they spread above ground? You are the one that destroyed my cage. My home. Yeah, now you know how it feels. I use my sonic bite to tear out of the webbing just as Alvo lunged towards me. You are different. I don't smell the fear coming from your bones. Like the rest of your colony. But that will change. More forbidden spiders then began to crawl out of the darkness. And some of the eggs even hatched. My family only grows stronger by the day. And they will feast. They were all about to charge in at once. But suddenly, I felt the ground fall out below me. I barely got my wings to catch my fall as I landed in a tunnel deep below the forest. Fozo? No! We thought you were the queen! Wait, what? Are you the ants that stayed with her? Why isn't she with you? I don't have time for this. She was taken, okay? Taken? Wait! I followed them down the tunnels until we reached a small campsite with other warden ants. Who was she taken by? We... 
don't know. We thought it was the spiders, so that's why we were here. We've been searching for days. I then looked around and noticed that they all seemed so weak and hungry. Everyone, go back to my colony and join us. You all need the rest. And together, we'll find the queen. I promise. We don't really have any other choice. Fine, we'll meet you there. We went our separate ways as I made it back to Pierce in front of the pizzeria. Here you go, one scorpion tail. Thank goodness. With that, Pierce was able to attach the tail onto himself and then used it to pick the lock. Yes. On days 53 to 56, we entered the pizzeria to see that the place was full of rat customers. Whoa, it's actually a pretty busy spot for rats, apparently. There, in the kitchen. The blinding pizzas gotta be in there. Good eye, Pierce. I walked through the kitchen doors and started to look around but then appearing in the doorway was an intimidating rat chef hey is that an ant in my kitchen no 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 the rat rushed forward and started to swing his big chef's knife at me Wah! knock it off i moved around the kitchen fighting him with my sonic booms look please i just want to find the blinding pizza the blinding a pizza i haven't made that pie in almost 20 rat years, pal. That dish went out of business. No one wanted to eat it. Well, now you have a customer who does. Or what? Can you not do it? Why, you? I can make any pie. We both went to the other side of his kitchen, where his pizza oven was. All right, I need a three ingredients. A blinding dough, the ancient cheese, and the skulky sauce. They all should be somewhere in this town, but I sure ain't gonna get them. So you bring them to me, and I'll make you the best pizza you've ever had. On days 57 to 59, I flew throughout the town looking for the ingredients. Thankfully, I was able to buy the blinding dough off of an old rat at a convenience store. Uh, thanks. <laughs> now scram out of here. The ancient cheese I found in a dark alleyway, but as I grabbed it, something snapped at me. Seriously? A mousetrap? Finally, I went down into an abandoned basement full of old bottles. And there, across the room, was a bottle with a skulky glow. There you are. In a hurry to collect my sauce, I hit a shelf, causing some of the bottles to fall and shatter. The liquids all mixed together caused a puddle to form. And from it rose a large sewage monster. Oh, come on! It began to launch waves of disgusting sewer water towards me and completely drenched me. The smell is horrible. I fought back with my sonic boom, flying around the basement to dodge all of its attacks until I finally took it down. I was able to now pick up the last ingredient. I better get out of here before I make another mess. On days 60 to 63, I returned to the Chef Rat's Pizzeria to see him serving a group of young mutated warrior turtles? Yo, best pizza in the whole sewer, man. <laughs> Radical. They ran off, leaving me with the chef. You got some weird customers. <sighs> Do you have the ingredients or not? I quickly tossed him over everything I had collected and watched as he scurried into his kitchen, only to hear music coming from inside? What's going- Aha! Uh -huh. I make the dough, spread the sauce, sprinkle the cheese, and voila! Your pizza is served! Whoa! As I took a bite of the pizza, I felt myself grow in strength and size. I gained five more hearts and a newfound ability to dash forward. Perfect! Of course it is! Now, leave and never break into my restaurant again! On days 64 to 68, I made it safely back to my anthill with the new and improved Pierce. But before we could go any further, he 
pulled me aside. Hey, Bozo, I uh really appreciate this new tale. I've always been more of a big talk, no walk kind of guy. Just been so tired of feeling useless. But now, finally feel whole again. I'll never forget what you've done for me. Of course. I'm just happy that I could help you out. I made my way over to the food room and placed the blinding slice with the others. My fellow warden ants then quickly took their bites, causing them to upgrade. But just then, I noticed that the group of weak-looking ants were huddled in the corner. Go on, guys. Eat the food. You'll feel better. We can't. The Warden Queen would be furious. She told us never to touch those. The Queen? I almost forgot she was taken. We need to find her. One of the weaker ants came forward, dropping down her crown. This is uh, all we have left of her, but I don't know how it could help. Thank you. Now, while I'm away, eat that food. I promise you need it. On day 69 to 73, I flew out of base as fast as I could with the queen's crown. What am I supposed to do with this? Huh. Instinctively, I placed it on my head and was suddenly sucked into a vision. It looked to be a battlefield littered with destruction. Is she here? In a flash, I returned to my body. Well, now I know where to look. After searching for a while, I found myself at the edge of the same desolate wasteland. This is where it happened, isn't it? The big battle. I looked around and noticed a mountain towering above the area. I'll be able to see everything from there. It was a struggle. But as I finally reached the mountain's peak, there looking down at everything was the queen. There you are. Wait, you weren't kidnapped? What? Fozo? No, I left to be alone. Why are you here? I've been searching everywhere for you. You have to come back to our colony now. I, I'm not fit to lead anymore. I've always tried my best to protect all of us, the colony, from what happened here all those years ago, but it's never been enough. My people are growing weaker by the day. Fight, don't fight. Either way, we all end up dead. I know what happened to your husband, to the king. And I'm so sorry that you lost him. But you shouldn't live the rest of your life blaming yourself. You did all you could then. But you can do more now. If we don't take a stand against those spiders, then the rest of the colony is going to be killed off. Same as the king. Just then, a giant spider ambushed us. Without hesitation, it charged forward towards the queen. No! I quickly flew in between them, blasting it away. Leave her alone! The spider angrily hissed and began attacking me instead. It was still larger than I was, but I wasn't about to give up. I kept unleashing a bunch of attacks, and the spider kept countering. No, is this gonna be it? Just then, the spider was knocked back by the queen. Stay away from my people. Together, we blasted the spider again and again, until finally it was defeated. You, you helped me? You were right, Fozo. The king would want us to free the colony from the spider threat, not wallow in fear and sorrow. Thank you for not giving up on me. Of course. Happy to have you back, your highness. And I believe this belongs to you. Thank you. I can tell you've already collected most of the warden foods. If you retrieve the last one, we may finally stand a chance. The queen led me through the forest until we reached the entrance of a strange looking dump. Wait, is that Skulk? Yes, and within this place lies the deep, dark sandwich. Really? Then that's where I'm going next. The rest of our colony awaits your arrival at our new anthill. They need you. Then I shall return to them. Good luck, Fozo. Now, time to get myself a sandwich. On days 78 to 80, I headed inside of the deep, dark dump. Hello? Is there a deep, dark sandwich anywhere around here? <laughs> I then heard fast movement coming from behind me. Ah, hello? Who's there? Out of nowhere, a group of dumpster raccoons ran in and were circling me. Ah, I tried to fly, but was quickly swatted back down. 
So, a new pet has roamed into the dump, huh? He may be from the office, you know. From the office? No, look, I just want to get the deep dark sandwich, okay? I don't want to hurt anyone. Ah, oh, man, come on! Ah, so you want something very similar to what us dumpster raccoons want. The large dump raccoon then brought me over to where I could see a corner office raised over the dump. In that amazing, cold, air-conditioned office is a fridge. One that holds loads of food. But it is locked. Well, I could probably find a way to unlock it. If you manage to let us in, then I will let you take that deep, dark sandwich you're looking for. But be careful for a scary, ignorant beast resides there. On days 81 to 85, as I flew up to the office, I noticed that the keyhole was just big enough for me to fly into. I flew right in and looked at my new surroundings. There were a few desks and the fridge. I better get this door open. I saw a key sitting on one of the desks, but as I flew close to it, a massive claw swung over my head. Oh no, the beast! But I looked up and saw that it was a giant office cat. Nice kitty. The cat wasted no time swiping at me again and chasing me around the office. I don't stand a chance against this thing. Where's that key? Finally, I flew fast enough to get enough space to grab it and was able to unlock the door. Charge! All the raccoons flooded in, overpowering the cat. Look who's in the air conditioning now! <laughs> <coughs> what? You want to be in here? All I've ever wanted is to be outside, but they always lock the door. Well, boss man here said that you were a monster who... Ow! <laughs> uh, sorry about that, ma'am. Uh, why don't we put our differences aside and work together from now on? Truce? Truce. With that, the raccoons opened the fridge for me, and there was the deep, dark sandwich. Yes! I took a bite, causing me to upgrade into my final warden ant form. I gained 10 more hearts and felt like the strongest ant ever. Thank you, everyone. Now, I got some scores to settle. On days 86 to 90, I left the deep, dark dump, but was met back to the site of my home. The forest throughout the entire terrain, everything looked like it was consumed by death and destruction. Spiders were roaming around, taking down any creature they could and webbing up the land to claim the territory as theirs. Yes, my family, spread fear. No, the spider's numbers, it's too high. We have to try and stop this before it's too late. On days 91 to 94, I arrived back to my anthill. I looked around. My queen was sitting up above the rest of the warden ants. Thank goodness you're here safely. From there, I went to work and built up my queen, her very own throne in the center of the anthill. We couldn't fight as a colony without her direction. I then went over and placed the final warden food inside of our room, allowing the ants to eat it and gain its power. I looked up and our ants all looked so much stronger. Yes, they do. Now, step forward over here. Okay. I did as she said and looked out to see all of the warden people and even Pierce. Everyone, take a look. This is an example of how each and every one of us should act. Selfless, brave, and most importantly, caring. This ant you are looking at, even though rejected and blamed for his previous actions, took a stand and fought for this colony no matter what. So I think it's only suiting that he is the one that will lead us into the fight of our lives. The queen stood back and I never felt so honored. Thank you, everyone. The spiders, they are out of control. If we don't do something about it now, we will never have a home again. No more run. It's time that we take the fight to them. On days 95 to 99, I led my warden ant colony to face the forgotten spiders. There at the edge of the forgotten forest was Alvo and his people. 
You know, the last time the ants tried to fight, they regretted it. You said it yourself. I'm different. And no matter what you do, we will fight together. Then you will die together. My family, devour them. All of the spiders began to charge across the forest as I rallied my ants. This is it. For our colony, we all charged in and clashed with the spiders as the second big battle of our kind began. Ants and spiders were doing everything they could to swing into battle as both sides wanted to prove their strength. Take this! With the powerful sonic boom, I knocked back a horde of spiders, leaving an opening where I saw Alvo disappear into the darkness. Is he trying to escape? I have to get him! Go! We can handle these eight-legged freaks! We will be right behind you, Fozo. The colony is with you. On day 100, I chased after Alvo, but lost sight of him. Where did he go? The trees rustled to the left and right of me. Oh no, did I just fall into his trap? Suddenly, yes, you have. I felt his webs wrap around me as he pounced directly on top of me. Ah! <sighs> you are nothing but food. But the tool for my people's rise! I used my sonic bite to cut out of the webbing and quickly flew up. But Alvo hit me back down. Oh, he's too strong. Yes, that is the fear that I sensed on every creature. Now you are just like them. Before he attacked again, I looked over to the giant tree overlooking the forest. There, I flew as fast as I could straight up the branches of the tree. Where are you going? Within an instant, Alvo was in front of me in the tree's branches. Oh no, this is it. We continued to fight as we circled around the branches. I tried my best to dodge his every attack and just kept trying to tire him out. Stop running! Wrong again, Alvo. I'm not running. Never! With a final sonic boom, I launched Alvo off of the top of the tree as he plummeted far below. Yeah. No. No. Alvo and his family were defeated, and this forest can finally be free again. On day one, I spawned in as a killer bee, overlooking my entire colony. I watched as all of my people went through the hive, spreading honey and servicing our amazing queen. You, a new killer bee. I think I'll call you Fozo. Just then, our entire beehive began to shake violently. Uh, what's going on? Our hive was burst open and destroyed by a giant killer bear. Oh no. Ah, uh, yes. More of my precious honey. Hibernation is just around the corner, and I will stop at nothing to take it all from you. I watched as my queen bee signaled the others to attack the giant bear. They did their best, but with the bear's brute strength, it was able to swipe most of them out with ease. My people! Bozo, you must take the honey core now. Without it, our colony won't survive. I quickly picked it up and knew that I had to leave if I wanted to save my colony. Oh no, you don't. I flew away with the giant bear sprinting right behind me. On day two, I was being chased by the bear. Because I was still a baby, my wings were very little, making me unable to fly up high. This sucks. Up ahead, I noticed a log lying down, and on it was an opening. Perfect. I have to hide. I flew my tiny wings over and was able to make it inside of the log. Oh, that was close. Am I safe? Just then, the log burst open behind me. Ah! You aren't going anywhere with my honey. Time to run. I started to fly through the log, with the bear destroying it more and more. I then reached the other side, but unfortunately, it was over a cliff. Oh no, I'm done for. Knowing I had no other option, I decided to jump. Ah! 
on day three, I landed far below. Ah, I was surrounded by a dense jungle, not knowing where I was or where to go. I can't believe my colony. It's gone. That bear is pure evil. I was so angry that I threw the honey core right on the floor. Ah! Because of this, it started to glow. What is happening? A tiny honey being then grew from it. Ah! Well, man, it gets crapped in there. Oh, hello. Hi. I see you were chosen to hold on to my core. Here, let me just... The entity then performed a magical spell, which caused me to glow. Whoa. There you go. I've just given you the power of the core. With it, you could do great things, but you must get stronger first. But how? In time, you will see. Go, find your special flowers. With them, you will grow to be big and strong. Wait, but before I could ask any more questions, the honey being disappeared. Flowers? What flowers? I was about to pick up the honey core, but out of nowhere, I was hit with a bomb. Ow! Is that precious honey? <laughs> On day four, a weird rat bandit picked up my honey core and started to run. Hey, uh, get back here. I tried my best to catch up, but with its swift movements and acrobatics, he was losing me. I can't lose that core. We ran until he was cut off by a large lake. Rats. Hey, who are you and why did you steal my honey? Oh, me? I am Splinter. I was sent to roam throughout these forests to get as much honey as I could for Thorn. Thorn? He must be talking about the bear. That's right. Boss man must hibernate before winter rolls through. And if I help, I'll be right there by his side, eating his scraps. No! Splinter then whistled, which signaled smaller rats to emerge from the bushes of the jungle. Take that little bee out! On day five, the smaller rats charged in and began to attack. They hit me with their tiny paws and bit at me every chance they had. My hearts were getting really low, and I knew there was no way I could take them on. Stay away from me. I began to fly away from them throughout the jungle until I ran into another opening. Far on the other end of it lied a flower much larger than any I had ever seen. Is that what the honey core was talking about? Out of pure urge, I flew towards the flower and decided to pick it up. Because of this, I gained five hearts and grew in size. Whoa, I feel stronger. And look at my new stinger. There he is. Get him. The rats charged in. But since I was upgraded, I was able to shoot out powerful stinger attacks at will. I was able to take down those rats. Look at me. I did it. Now, time to go make sure my queen is safe. On day six, I was able to make it back to my destroyed colony. I looked around and all I saw was destruction and fire. <coughs> Who is there? Queen, thank goodness you're okay. Our colony, Ozo, it's destroyed. All of our people have abandoned it. That horrible bear. I know, we need to stop him. But first, it's time we build our hive back up. I placed down the flower that I collected and used its pollen to start making a bigger beehive. It's nothing compared to our old place yet, but I know that it will be even better. Whoa, look at you, Fozo. It looks like you found the first of five sacred flowers, the others being the prickly cacti, the burning sunflower, the raging blood tulip, and the underground titan orchid. We can build our colony back up more and more with each one we collect. Well then, I will go and find all of them for our people. Just then, smoke started to emerge from the nearby tree lines. Oh no, a forest fire? I have to go see what's going on. On day seven, I followed the smoke until I reached a spruce forest that was completely on fire. Oh no. My home, my precious lovely wooden paradise. Hey, you, are you okay? No, my ant colony lives in this very forest, but fireflies came through and started burning the entire thing down. 
Fireflies? What do you mean? Just then, I felt a pinch of heat from behind me. Ow! Behold, the blazing wrath of the fireflies! Oh, they are literal fireflies. The fireflies started to attack. Ah! It shot dangerous fireballs at me, causing me to burn every time that I got hit. I did my best to aim back at it and shoot my new stinger attack. But it had far more experience with its range attacks than I did. No! Quick! Retreat! The ant signaled me to follow him, and I did. We both were able to run through the small cracks of the forest, escaping the firefly. <laughs> Pathetic! You better run! On day eight, the ant took me deep underground inside of its anthill. I looked around, and even in here, everything was destroyed. Everyone just looked so hurt. And those fireflies are no joke, man. What made them come here? The ant then brought me over to a room that held an empty pedestal. We used to have a really tasty looking cactus, and those fireflies came through and burned everything. Luckily, it survived. But then not so luckily, they decided to take it. Wait, did you say a cactus? I need that. Good luck. Those fireflies aren't just gonna give it to you. I mean, look. Now all of us ants don't got a home. What if you guys come live with me? I'm trying to build up my own colony. And us colonies have to help each other out, right? The ants all seemed excited and agreed. I quickly brought them all out of their base and was stopped by the main ant. I appreciate you helping out. So I'm going to help you out. The fireflies live in the desert, not too far from here. My guess, if you find them, then you'll find that cactus you're after. On days 9 to 10, I followed the ants' directions deep within the nearby desert. It didn't take long for me to finally come across a large sand castle. There were loads of fireflies flying throughout it. Well, it looks like I found their home. Score! Okay, Fozo, you got this. I began to sneak my way through, knowing if I alerted any of them, I was done for. Hey, Ralph. Are you worried about that killer bear roaming around lately? What? Why would I be? He's hibernating far off in the dark forest miles away. He knows not to come in the desert. Dark forest, huh? Interesting. On days 11 to 12, I made my way higher inside the sandcastle. Okay, I just have to make it to the top. After a few close calls and journeying deep into the firefly's base, I was finally able to reach the top and in front of me rested the prickly cacti. I did it. I flew over and collected it, which caused my body to change. I gained five hearts and my wings grew to full size. I bet I can fly like a true killer bee now. Before I could do anything though, a group of fireflies flew to the top of the tower. Uh-oh. Hey, he's taking the prickly. Get him. The fireflies rushed in and began shooting their fire attacks at me. Okay, time to test out these new wings. I jumped off the tower and thankfully I could fly up very high now. I started to leave the desert with the fireflies chasing right behind me. Uh, stop it. I can't get hit by one of those things. I have to find a way to escape. Is that a waterfall? Wait a minute. I have an idea. I flew straight through the water stream, leaving the fireflies behind due to their weakness of water. Woohoo! This isn't over, B! On days 13 to 14, I made my way back to the queen and our hive with my amazing new wings. Fozo, this place looks great, but uh... Where can we stay? Oh, right. I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, I was able to build these ants their very own ant hill on the opposite side of the tree. Perfect. Oh, yeah, this'll do. Thanks. I then placed the prickly cacti down on one of our hills. From it, I began to collect its pollen and used it to further build up our hive. I knew I was going to get bigger, so it had to fit me and our future colony down the line. Fozo, you found another flower, but it's strange. What is? Our people. None of them have come home. Wait, 
Ozo, do you have the honey core? About that, uh, no, Queen. I don't. I'm sorry. It was stolen from me. That's not good. Without that core, the other bees will never find their way back home. I promise I will get that honey core back before Thorn gets it himself. You have my word. Another forest down, and from it, more tasty treats, honey, berries, and even you. <laughs> this place is taken care of. On to the next. On days 15 to 16, I was out searching for the honey core thief, Splinter. No! No! What was that noise? I started to follow the screams until I spotted a praying mantis crying. Hey, is everything all right? My life, my passion, it's, it's over. Hold on, what do you mean? My guitar, it's gone. I am so confused. You see, I'm a musician. It's my life's work. I had this wonderful, absolutely perfect guitar. Her name was Shirley, but that's when it happened. This evil, evil bear destroyed my forest, and because of it, I left my guitar behind. Who knows where it is now? You must be talking about Thorn. He destroyed my home too. He's heartless. I saw him talking to a stupid looking rat too. Wait, you did? Suddenly, I had an idea. Hey, how about I help you get your guitar back? And in return, you show me where that rat is. You would do that? Yes, of course. I went out searching for the praying mantis's guitar on days 17 to 18. Oh, begotted bing, I stole the garbage with the zing. Wait, is that singing? I followed the noise until I was brought to a small raccoon bandit camp. Hey, give that to me, it's my turn. Tacos, spaghetti, confetti, enchilada. They have the guitar. Hey, give that back. It's not yours! Oh, looky, looky. It's a killer bee. Why would we give this thing to you? We're making sounds of the heavens over here. No, you're not. You dare disrespect our soothing voices? Without warning, the raccoons started to attack me. They were pretty fast and clawed at me with their little claws. As we were fighting, one of the raccoons accidentally punched a log. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Ralph, did, did did you hear that? Oh, I did, Gerald. That sounded like a drum set. Now that is music. From there, both of the raccoons started to punch the log violently. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Hey, B, you can have this stupid old useless dumb guitar. We got a new instrument now. Yeah, Ralph, we're going to be total rock stars now. Woohoo! Yeah, rock stars. Uh, thanks. I left and brought the guitar back over to the praying mantis. Whoa, amazing. I would have never found this on my own. Follow me. I will show you that rat cave. On days 19 to 20, the praying mantis and I split up. It didn't take long until I found the rat's cave. This has to be it. You have betrayed us. We had an alliance with your people, you filthy cheat. What you and Thorn are doing is wrong. You're going to destroy everything at this rate. I have to get that honey core. I ran in and caught Splinter's attention. Ha! We meet again. Splinter charged in, but I was prepared. I fought back. And with my new wings and bee sting, I was faster and stronger than ever. How? How did a bee get this much power? The rat wasn't able to keep up with me, and he started to run off. Ah, I'll be back. I was going to follow him, but just then, I noticed the honey core lying on his desk. Yes! I went over and picked it back up. I am never losing you again. Now, I could really start to restore our hive. Hey! Over here! What did Splinter mean when he said you had an alliance? My king made a deal with Thorn and that rat. They wouldn't bother us as long as we reported on where all the other animals were. That's terrible. Thorn is destroying the entire forest. I know. My king, he's gone completely mad ever since our people found this weird blood flower. Now, that's all they care about. Blood flower? The blood tulip. I'm looking for that. Do you think... But before I could finish my sentence, rumbling filled the cave, quickly followed by a loud... Oh no, is that... You gotta get me out of here, man. 
On days 22 to 26, I quickly freed the mosquito. Okay, we have to leave this cave without Thorn noticing us. If he does, we're toast. Yeah. Splinter, where are you? You better have called me here for a good reason. While he was distracted, the mosquito and I both flew for it, but were quickly stopped by a dead end. Oh no. Oh, well, isn't this a nice, delicious surprise? I think I remember you. Oh yeah? Does destroying my entire colony ring any bells? You need to stop destroying the forest. You're going to kill everything, and there will be nothing left, even for you. Nothing left? Nothing left? I have had nothing all my life. My own crew of bears, the ones I should trust most, turn their backs on me like an outcast. Why? Because I was too big for hibernation. There wasn't enough food. So what did they do? They abandoned me, leaving me to die in the cold winter. Well, look at me now. I will always have enough now, and no one will stop me. Sure? A monster! Thorn was angry and started to charge at us. We were no match for him, but luckily, with our small size, we were able to fly above him and out of the cave. I will get you, Fozo, in time. That honey will be mine! <laughs> On days 27 to 29, the mosquito and I were flying fast away from Thorn. Come on, we have to keep flying. The mosquito then just stopped. Hey, what's the matter i looked around and everything inside the nearby forest was dead was this thorn if we don't do something about him the entire forest could turn into this this place it used to be beautiful i remember being here as a kid animals of all kinds shared this space in perfect balance and we all just got along then our king found that blood flower and that bear moved in and it's all falling apart. That's horrible. Well, don't worry. We can change things and restore all of it. I sure hope so, B. But I'm not sure if I can fully believe it just yet. At the very least, you taking that flower will help save my people from our king. So I'll take you there if you want. Thank you for having faith in me. Now come on, let's go and fix this. On days 30 to 32, the mosquito brought me to his kingdom. It was in a beautiful, tall red forest, high up in the trees. Wow, this place is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Our king found it for us well, before he turned flower hungry. High up were loads of mosquito guards everywhere. I can see that. How are we going to get inside? It won't be easy. The flower is in the throne room. We need to be really careful. Come on. I followed the mosquito through his home high in the trees, remaining undetected until we came upon the king's keep. We snuck inside the keep, trying not to be seen. Is that? Far inside the throne room lied the blood tulip. Ah, you. You dare come back after what you've done to your people? I betrayed you. Us mosquitoes are supposed to be allies to the forest. King, it is you that has betrayed your people all because of that flower. You are a coward. Blasphemy! You have come here just to die. On days 33 to 35, the Blood King mosquito flew in and started to attack us. He was much larger than the other mosquitoes and incredibly strong. He shot out very powerful blood at us. Ah! Thanks to the help of my mosquito friend, though, we were able to outmaneuver the king's attacks and counter. You think this is over? The king then signaled lower mosquito guards to enter through the room. Oh no. With their combined forces, the battle was a lot harder, but the both of us knew what we were fighting for. And with one final hit, we were able to take the king down. No! The king's crown was dropped, and Mose went to pick it up. Hey, look at you. Because of this, the guards looked confused and stopped attacking. Whoa, they must have just been following orders. Now my people can finally rest easy knowing that they're free. Thanks, Fozo, for everything. Of course, we're in this together. I then went over to the blood tulip and grabbed it. Because of this, I gained five more hearts, and my chest started to feel weird. I now could shoot out hot honey at will. Awesome. You know, Fozo, 
I think this place has too much history with our king. Is it okay if I go home with you and start my own kingdom? Of course. On days 36 to 39, I arrived back at base with my new mosquito friends. I built them up their very own tall tree colony so that they could truly call this place their home. Wow, this place looks great, Fozo. I can't wait to grow this place up for my people. Of course. It feels good that two different colonies could team up for the greater good. Speaking of colonies, I placed the blood tulip down, which strengthened the hive. From there, I collected its pollen and used the resources to build up the beehive even more. It's closer and closer to being complete. My little bee, just look at you. Did you find that honey core? I sure did. The queen was excited and brought us inside the hive. From there, we placed the honey core on a pedestal. Just as the core got placed, a large signal burst out from the hive. What was that? Then I heard the sound of buzzing. Wait, bees? My fellow bees started flying back from the forest and coming home. Arrive. Our queen. With the core back in place, our colony can finally find their way back home. Hopefully with more flowers, I can make the hive even stronger than it was before. Great work, Fozo. Now come with me. I need to show you something. On days 40 to 44, the queen brought me to a clearing out of our colony forest. Hey, where are you taking me? You see that cloud far off in the distance? I looked up far off into the distance. Yeah, what are we looking at? Well, that is where the next flower is, the burning sunflower. That's great. We are going to be back up to full force in no time. Not so fast. That cloud's height is past the flight limitations of just a regular bee. If you try to fly up there as you are now, you won't be able to sustain the strong gust of wind. And you, well, will die. Okay, noted. Don't worry, Fozo. <laughs> Yeah, so you see, there's been said long ago in ancient bee history to have existed a special type of nectar. Nectar, huh? Precisely. Otherwise known as the lost ancient nectar. However, many believe it's a myth, but not me. If a bee were to find it and pour it throughout his wings, well, it would amplify their flying skills by a wide margin. Huh, very well. Now, how do I find it? On days 45 to 47, I followed my fellow bee until he led me straight to an ancient temple. Well, I think this might be the place, Bozo, but no one knows how to get inside. I guess it's time I figure that out myself. I left the bee and flew straight to the main entryway, but just like the bee said, it was locked. After trying to mine the blocks, I realized I needed to find another way in. I kept searching until I found a weird looking pattern of honeycomb targets on the wall. Here goes nothing. Using my new honey shot ability, I tried to shoot at one of the targets, but missed by a long shot. I guess I need some practice. You must use your heightened senses as a bee, Fozo. That's the only way. You're right. I concentrated and listened to my new friend. Come on, Fozo. Heighten your senses. I shot my honey shot, and it was a direct hit. Two more times, and the door finally opened. I did it. Let's hope this nectar is worth it. I wandered throughout the temple when I finally stumbled upon an opening. Right in front of me was a large nectar oasis. On days 48 to 52, I walked into the oasis. I was about to dip my wings inside of it when I heard a skittering sound coming from behind me. You stupid idiot bee! What? How did you get in here? I have been following you for days! Do you have any idea how bad you made me look to Thorn? Why should I care? How could you even work for someone like him? Does it matter? I am gonna defeat you here and bring him your head! Then I will finally get his approval! Splinter was about to charge in, but was quickly cut off by a loud crashing sound. Out of nowhere, Thorn was there himself. You've gotta be kidding me! Th Thorn, what are you doing here? I wasn't gonna let you fail me again, you useless rat! I came here to end this myself! 
but I, I wasn't going to disappoint you this time. Silence! Now, I'm going to take this bee down and end this mutiny. Thorn started to charge in. Oh no, I knew I had to fight back with everything I had. But I quickly realized that my newly found upgrades just weren't enough. He ran at me with his brute strength and swatted me. Ah! I was hit down into the nectar and my body started to feel strong. Strange. I started to become stronger, causing my wings to change into full nectar wings. Using the power of the nectar, I shot straight up through the spire of the temple. On days 53 to 56, I shot up right in the center of the sky. Whoa, I have never been this high up. Watch it, you idiot. Uh, sorry. Because of the bird, I was turned around. And is that? It is. The cloud that the queen showed me. I started to fly over to it. These nectar wings are something else. Woohoo! I finally arrived at the cloud and was shocked to see a civilization of wasps. What's a killer bee doing up this high? How did you get up here? It's a long story. Look, I'm here for the sunflower. Oh, well then, uh, I'm sorry. You're out of luck, pal. What? No, I came all this way. It must be here. Ah, uh, follow me. The sky wasp took me to another room of their kingdom. And sitting there was the sunflower, but it didn't look so good. Hey, what's wrong with it? Some ship came by a couple days ago and took our sunflower seeds. Without them, our precious flower is dying. I will go out and find them. If I'm able to bring them back, can we make a deal? I need this flower. You're one ambitious bee. I'll think about it. Now go. On days 57 to 59, I started flying off to the north in search of the sunflower seeds, when out of nowhere, I spotted an airship. Huh, that seems worth checking out. I approached it and saw penguins? What? They said it wasn't possible. They said us fatties could never fly. Well, look who's flying now! <laughs> As I got closer, I could see that the penguins were using the sunflower seeds to power up their ship. Whoa, time to sneak on board and grab what is mine. I flew in unnoticed and made my way over to the seeds. Yes, I got them. Or no? What's happening? Brace yourselves. We're going down. Why is this happening? I have literally no idea. Ah! Knowing I had to think fast, I used my new hot honey ability and shot it at the ship's generator. This caused the fuel to fill up again and the ship started to stabilize. Ah! Uh, huh. Must have been a malfunction or something. <clears throat> Anyways. Phew! That was close. Okay, time to get out of here. I returned to the Sky Wasp Society on days 60 to 63. From there, I brought the sunflower seeds back to the guard who was waiting for me. Here you go. Wow, you really found them? Oh, this is perfect. The guard walked over and put them back in the sunflower, and it immediately began to transform. The sunflower was now back to its full glory. You know what, B? Without you, this wouldn't have been possible. Go ahead, take the sunflower. Only if you promise to take care of it. Of course I will. Thanks. I grabbed the newly transformed sunflower and began to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and grew larger in size. Because of this, I also got a really cool honey grab ability that came straight from the ground. This is sick. Thank you, Sky Wasp. You have no idea how much I appreciate this. On day 64 to 68, I got back to base and immediately placed the sunflower down. With the additional pollen, my fellow bees and I went to work and started to build up our beehive even more. Inside of it, I made sure to add some sleeping quarters for my other bees to stay in. Awesome! Because of this, I noticed even more bees starting to come in from the tree lines. With the bees coming back and the improved hive, it was really looking like we had a chance against Thorn. 
Bozo! The colony! My goodness, it's almost complete! You've done very well. Just one more flower and we may be able to stand up to that bear and stop his destruction. Thorn is going to regret ever coming to this forest. Just then, I noticed that there were some hummingbirds entering our base. Yeah, this place will be great. Don't you think it'll be great? Yeah, I think it'll be great. What are they doing here? There's been a lot of commotion going on away from camp, and it's pushing some of the other animals over here. Could be worth checking out. Huh, you know, you might be right. On days 69 to 73, I followed the trail of critters throughout the jungle. It didn't take long for me to finally reach a really damaged village. What is going on here? Not my home. <laughs> Oh, this sucks. It sucks so bad, man. I looked around and all of the villagers' houses were destroyed. Just then, I heard a cry that was much different than the others. <laughs> I walked inside of a house to see a villager who was alone and sad. <laughs> What the? Just then, the villager used the potion of magic and revealed himself to actually be a witch. Oh, this was too easy. Then, something really hard hit me in the back, and I began to pass out. On day 74 to 77, I woke up to the sound of snarling? What is going on? Ah, you stupid bee! Now, I get my revenge! I am going to savor this moment! Just remember, the swamp is off limits! Yeah, yeah, get lost! So what, this is it? It seems that way! Bozo, you did all of this just to fail. You are only an insect after all. It looks like I win. Yeah, we win. Shut up, you rat. I had to do all of this myself because you are such a failure. What? I have been helping you this whole time. I, I swear. Help? <laughs> you think you were helping me? You think you're anywhere near useful as me? Yeah, I thought we were friends. Shut it! You have done nothing. You really thought I was going to give you my scraps. You really thought I would share? I was just keeping you close for one last treat before I hibernate. What? You are going to eat me? That's enough! Time to finish off this bee! Thorn started to turn to me, and I thought that I was done for! Then, right before he took me out, Thorn screamed in pain! An explosion happened, caused by Splinter? Leave him alone, you monster! He then shot another one, which opened my cage! Thorn turned around and swatted at him! You traitor! Arr! In the commotion, I had just enough time to fly out of the hole. Come on, Splinter! We have to go! Now! On day 78 to 80, the rat and I ran far away through the trees. We heard rustling off behind us, and I knew that Thorn was searching. We have to keep going! <coughs> Stop! Stop! What? We can't! We have to go! No, you have to go! Listen, it's up to you now, Fozo. Don't talk like that. Come on, you can make it. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to feel needed, Fozo. No one has ever wanted me my entire life. Who'd want a rat? <laughs> I just thought if I joined Thorn, I would be powerful, but... <laughs> Oh, he was just using me all along. Splinter, we can do this together. We can take him down. No, I'm I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to make up for any of this. Please, just don't take it out on us, rats. We just wanted to feel needed. Splinter? Splinter! No! I was extremely sad, but was interrupted by more leaves moving throughout the woods. Oh, no. Thorn? Just as I thought I was done for, smaller rats emerged from the forest. I could tell that they were extremely sad, and they knew so was I. The rats then started to walk in a direction, and I felt as if they were signaling me. I followed them to see what they were trying to show me. 
On days 81 to 85, I followed the rats until we reached a creepy looking cave entrance. Uh, where did you guys lead me? This place holds the Titan flower. Tonight is the only night it will bloom until a whole year. So you better hurry. Right. I did as the rat said and entered throughout the doorway. Hello? I walked throughout the lush cave tunnels until I reached an underground opening, but there was nothing inside. Just then, the moon started to reveal itself through the clouds, causing the entire cave to shake. What's going on? A flower much larger than the others sprouted in the center of it. Awesome. I went to go pick it up. But to my surprise, it started to attack me? What the? This flower is hostile? On days 86 to 90, the flower started to attack. Ah! It shot out very powerful poisonous attacks at me. And I knew that I had to avoid them. I kept shooting at it with my honey blast, which caused it to shoot out very dangerous vines from underneath me. Uh, get away! I knew what I was fighting for, and because of this, I couldn't give up. I used everything I had on the flower, which finally caused its defeat. Ha! I did it! I went over and picked up the flower, which caused me to fully upgrade, making me grow larger bee antlers. I gained five more hearts and now had a very powerful honey trap ability. I could now trap and explode my enemies with ease. With this, I think I'm finally ready to take on Thorn. On days 91 to 94, I arrived back at my hive with the rats. I immediately went over and built Splinter up his very own memorial site. I know he started off evil, but he truly did make it up. You did the right thing, Splinter. You were a hero. Truly a hero. All of us rats will always remember you, Splinter. Hey, Bozo, thanks for giving us a home. Yeah. We haven't had one of these places before. Of course. I went out and got the right amount of materials to build the rats their very own houses. There you go. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is amazing. It's even better than cheese. From there, I went over and placed the final flower. Because of this, my fellow bees and I went to work by fully building up our new beehive. With all of us working together, we were able to finally finish it up. Wow, just look at it. It's finally complete. Ozo, oh, I don't know how we could have done this without you. You are truly the savior to our people. Not yet, I'm not. I think it's time we take down this bear together. On days 95 to 99, I gathered all of my friends and fellow bees around the base. What's going on? I don't know, man. Just listen. I'm trying to pay attention. Thank you all for listening to me today. A while ago, our homes were raided and destroyed by Thorn. But look at how far we've come to truly turn things around. While our home may be safe, others are still in jeopardy. I think it is up to all of us to make things right by taking him down. Yeah, agreed. Oh, yeah. Just as I was about to leave with the insects, a large explosion interrupted us. It was Thorn himself. I heard you've been making more honey. I'll be taking that now. On day 100, my fellow bees and I all charged in together. Bring it. I watched as Moe's flew through the skies and attacked him whenever he could. The ants took the floor below him and started to bite at his feet. And the rats did what they could to hurt him as well. I have worked way too hard for this, for all of it. And I won't let you puny insects take it away from me. My fellow bees then flew in as well and started to attack. He countered everyone with his brute strength and even took down a few of my friends. Oh no, he's still too strong. Hey, you wanna fight someone? Fight me. With pleasure. Thorn then turned his attention straight to me and began to charge in. I used all of my newly acquired abilities and managed to really stun him. He was easily my toughest opponent yet, but I thought of everyone that was counting on me. I have to win. I have to. I hit Thorn harder and harder until finally he was starting to grow weak. No! No! 
Thorn was finally defeated. And now the forest and the animals inside of it could live in peace.